show and you can keep talking to us using the hashtag the daily brief at k24 tv and at sam w Njerogel. sign language interpreter the hour remains to be clement muli i have dr benson kibore with me in studio he's the chairman union of vet veterinary services of vet veterinary practitioners i think okay. your pardon of kenya he's with me in studio welcome to the program thank you sam a concerning point a concerning time for kenya right about now yes we have yet another outbreak of rift valley fever in nyandaro county tell us a little bit more about that yeah thank you sam and uh, i wish to take this opportunity first as a place to wish kenyans a happy valentine's day and oh. uh, just to confirm to you that you know as you enjoy the valentine's day we have a threat of the rift valley fever and um, we have <coughs> had confirmed cases in uh, nyandarwa county uh, we uh, two cases uh, in particular nyandarwa county is a low uh, incident uh, county but we are also following the epidemiological pattern of the disease to understand why at this time uh, of the year you know rift valley fever is spread by mosquitoes uh, and uh, we are, we had uh, the outbreak last year but now uh, we it has been confirmed in nyandarwa county that that tells you that people around in uh, nyandarwa county pe people around nakuru county nairobi because that, uh, our milk uh, comes from Nyandarwa County. Mm -hmm. uh, around Laikipia County, they are at a risk because they are spread, uh, the disease is spread uh, by uh, mosquitoes. And uh, that is why we always, uh, when you talk about the veterinary practitioners, we always at this point of the first line of defense mm -hmm. because we protect the humans against these uh, very deadly diseases. What are the signs? Because it's critical that, that pe the people of Kenya note this because we eat meat, we eat, uh, handle animals, uh, they are farmers and animals, and those are humans handling animals. And Dr. Kibore, before we get to the signs and symptoms, what is Rift Valley Fever? Thank you, uh, Sam. Rift Valley Fever is a viral disease. That tells you it, it, it is within that, uh, the group of Ebola. Uh, the, 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 it's it's, it's, it's uh, a disease when you have it, you have what you call hemorrhages. That is, you bleed. And uh, it is spread by uh, mosquitoes. Uh, and within humans, it is spread by touching either uh, aborted fetuses or milk or meat of an infected uh, animal. animal. So normally it occurs during the times uh, of rain and uh, and we had a huge uh, amount of rainfall in 2018. And therefore we still monitoring, but our practitioners are on the ground as we speak. But again, these are men and women who have chosen the path to protect humans. Mm -hmm. And therefore we come in as a union of veterinary practitioners to ensure that they are not at risk. We have lost several uh, humans in the name of veterinary doctors in the line of duty of preventing disease from crossing over to humans. The signs and symptoms of Rift Valley fever, how can you tell that all is not well with you? Yes, what you will first notice is, uh, especially in animals, is uh, you see abortions. But secondly, in humans, uh, let me go straight to, 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 to humans, Thank because you. we are talking uh, about uh, when you hear have headache, when you have backache. Sim it's malaria type of uh, uh, symptoms. You have a little bit of diarrhea here and there, but what is so critical is uh, largely the hemorrhages because the disease causes you to uh, release bleed. blood, bleed into the body. That, that is specifically why the disease is so dangerous. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Well, you release blood out of the body? Yeah. Not, or into the body? You see, blood are contained in a system called uh, arteries, yeah. uh, veins, uh, capillaries. When they get outside, of those line uh, 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 of that circulatory system, the now blood that, vessels. Yes, the blood vessels. Yes, yes, of the blood vessels. That is what now we say it's bleeding into the tissues. Mm -hmm. Yes, which is dangerous. Which is More dangerous like because definitely bleeding. once you uh, uh, blood moves out of your uh, circulatory uh, system, mm -hmm. what happens is now you get these other dangers of uh, you know your your body gets uh, suffoc is suffocated because it's blood that carries energy and oxygen to every part of the of mm. the body. Yeah, yeah. So that's why the disease is critical it is important and we uh, our members are on the ground but again this is where we come in uh, to have two things in mind
One, our uh, practitioners are the first line of defense to defend the humans. You're talking about, like now, this Rift Valley fever. You're talking about rabies. You're talking about brucellosis. These are diseases of humans. But basically, what we do, we protect them at the source. But now, what we are seeing is also inability of our county. The Schedule 4 of the Constitution of Kenya classified uh, county functions, uh, Schedule 4, part close 2, part 2, classified county health services, including the veterinary services. Mm -hmm. But what we are seeing is this skewed kind of resource allocation that we are not able to respond to such emergencies, uh, such kind of life-threatening uh, 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 diseases. But from I'll tell you some from 2013 to now we've seen we've seen spike in terms of cases and you know when they are spike in terms of cases from animals 70 percent of them close to humans that means it overloads the secondary health care mm -hmm. as we do the primary health care that's why you call health health is not health is when you are normal your systems are normal doctor yes. you know it was just last year just last year we had similar cases but in Wajia County and in that particular one we lost six people and we were told that the ministry the government is going to make sure that they've invested enough resources to do away with this kind of a situation how then has been the uptick the progress so far since was it June last year it was around June July in last July, year yes, yes isn't it yes. how has the progress been um, let me say this. Um, we, as a country, we love to talk a lot and act very less. I'll tell you this. Even if you go now, check at the county uh, resource allocation to the, the, the veterinary department. Because by now, we should be building the immunity across the animals uh, so that then we prepare ourselves for the next outbreak. But what happened is we went through the outbreak cycle and nothing is happening as we speak. That is why, as we said... Counties have largely failed in terms of resource allocation to this very, very important sector, which protects about over 1 trillion Kenya shillings in terms of our GDP, in terms of our economy. And that is why, as a union, one in the upcoming referendum, as what we want is one. Counties have failed. We want the creation of what we call one health commission. You cannot separate diseases that are threatening the life of humans from humans themselves. Mm -hmm. This is the first line. So you cannot say that, you know, let us revert the health functions back to the national government and leave the veterinary uh, functions at the county level. That will not happen because the aspect of disease control, we need to match resources. We need to match uh, human and capital resources in terms of controlling these uh, uh, diseases. And why are we saying this? Right now, if you look at rabies cases, it has gone up. Uh, 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 by about 50% in the, the country. Uh, when you talk, the Rift Valley fever is, is here. When you even talk about milk, for example, we are unable now to control uh, and assure safety in terms of milk. And because every day, and I think even some today morning, you took tea and you're taking tea, you're taking milk, that means you are at the danger. Like, like, like now we're talking about aflatoxicosis, which every milk, we are the country with the highest level of aflatoxicosis in the world. Speaking of which, Dr. Tari, what does this mean then? Do we avoid milk and meat for the foreseeable future? What does it mean? It means that we need to put the necessary controls because you can avoid, you some, but you, a kid which has been born requires calcium from milk. That means our babies now are feeding on aflatoxicosis. They are feeding on uh, antimicrobials. And that is why we are saying you cannot separate the two. Uh, uh, and, and we want these services, the health, uh, the human health and the animal health, put together so that one commission can now manage the aspects of the uh, health of animals and, uh, and of humans. Because 70% of, of, of diseases that cross over to humans are from Animals. And from a preventive so, point of view, yes. Dr. Tari, that's what I'm asking. What does it mean? Do we say that we avoid meat for the foreseeable future because an outbreak is out here now and uh, we risk contact with animals when we consume animal products? So what does it mean for us? No, what we are calling for is that our men and women are on the ground trying to differentiate those animals that are already uh, affected 
uh, and to protect you. So you should not worry uh, some and uh, the Kenyans to say that you know now let's uh, leave a lo le let's leave meat, let's leave uh, 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 milk because our men and women, the veterinary uh, practitioners, are already on the ground doing the protection. That means what gets to you is what has been certified by uh, by our, 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 our practitioners to be safe for you. And that is why we say it is, we are here to protect the human population. That mm -hmm. is what we do. But so, uh, uh, don't worry. The other thing that we wanted also uh, 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 now is because, again, these are men and women who are sacrificing to save you and to save Kenyans. The problem is, these are men and women who are demotivated. They are remuneration. And, and we want to call the ministry, uh, the relevant ministry, to ensure that we, you uh, give us the recognition agreement as soon as possible. Because I'll tell you some very soon, very soon, and very soon, mm -hmm. the doctors of this country will speak and will speak with one voice. Because it cannot be that the person who protects the 70% is a lowly remunerated, is a lowly recognized, is the most trampled uh, upon in this country. And we control over a, 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 a trillion uh, Kenya shillings in terms of uh, our, our GDP, our, the exports. So this, we are calling on the government to walk the talk because we have initiated discussions regarding the, uh, the, the compensation, regarding the promotions, regarding the uh, employment of this uh, very crucial uh, cadre, mm -hmm. but the government is not listening. So we will also, and by the way, today we have, uh, want to support our nurses, uh, the strike for the nurses. Because this is what they negotiated with the government. They entered agreement with the government, both the ministry, the county, and they entered in a labor relations court. And what are we seeing today? We are seeing a president saying, let us backtrack on the agreements that we made. That's why he's saying, we're calling on the nurses of this country. We support fully because we want higher and, uh, 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 um, remuneration for no remuneration. Uh -huh. We want assured health for the people back of the, the Republic of Kenya. Back to Rift Valley fever. 500,000 RVF uh, vaccine kits were given last year by the ministry to counties based on a risk analysis. What became of these vaccines? Did they ever reach the ground? Were people ever vaccinated? And if so, how were they administered and to which counties? Um, just to correct, it is the vaccine to animals. Mm -hmm. We largely don't have a vaccine to humans. And uh, so what happened was these vaccines were given. To, yeah. Remember, we are talking about f over 50 million animals. And what is, what is 500,000 doses? Either way, it's a good place to start. You know, they some... say half a loaf is better than none. So my critical question of understanding is, as soon as these 500,000 were sanctioned by the ministry, one, did they ever get to the ground? Number two, which counties were given priority? And number three, has it changed anything? I'll tell you this. Wajir County in itself has over uh, uh, two million population in terms of uh, cattle and in terms of uh, sheep and goats. That means even when you issue 500,000 uh, doses of vaccine to a Jir County, which was the epicenter of the outbreak, that means you have not handled the situation. But again, this is to say, vaccination is not treatment. This is prevention. That means you are trying to protect those animals and, 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 and in places that the mosquitoes and the virus has not reached. But what we are having is a situation where we, those vaccines were very few, and it was not, a, it was not a continued. It ended there. We, in fact, we forgot about the Rift Valley fever in the year 2018. Now we are on another cycle. And I'll tell you, our contingency planning as a country is where we have a problem. Because we should be ensuring that animals within the very uh, high-risk areas are protected. Because if they're not protected, they become the susceptible host, which now multiply the virus to reach uh, 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 humans very, very quickly. Was Nyandarwa part of the counties that were given the vaccine? No. It wasn't. And you know, uh, let me tell you, uh, disease control is no longer a, a national function. It is a county function. And therefore, it is the county governments 
to ensure that their livestock within those areas are properly protected. They have the monies, they have the resources. But unfortunately, because of this, you know, uh, uh, don't care uh, uh, attitude in terms of the, 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 the livestock sector, we're seeing like uh, Wajia County, which only did about uh, less than uh, 400,000 uh, animals uh, vaccinate, va vaccinated. We had, had to vaccinate the buffer counties, that is the nearing counties. But that did not happen, that did not continue. So what we are seeing uh -huh. is why we are calling that we need a coordinated functions and especially on cases of emergencies, in cases of disease emergencies that affect directly humans to revert back to the national government. The take home definitely being, Dr. is that uh, in some of these counties like Nyandarwa, Kiambu, and other counties that have generated good, sizable income from uh, livestock farming, Let's not wait for government to disperse the vaccine. If you can afford it for your livestock, why not go ahead and get it? At the end of the day, it will save everyone, you know, some of these effects of having innocent people become victims of circumstances to some of these diseases like the Rift Valley fever. Of course, yes, last year the government did release 500,000 kits to vaccinate animals across the country. But then again, as Dr. Terry said, that was just but a drop in the ocean and much more needs to be done. Have a good afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your viewing. Happy Thursday. I would say happy Valentine's Day. Happy Thursday to everyone. And I will see you right here tomorrow for yet another edition of uh, The Daily Brief. I'm Samuel Njoroge. Inside Business is up next. Thanks to a sign language interpreter, Clement Muley. Thank you.